So, and like I said, a lot of people will say, I have friends, I can just talk to my friends. And like I mentioned earlier, you can run the risk of ruining your relationships with your friends if you keep going to them with your problems and you keep complaining to them. And also to your friends are, are, are they're biased. They're, if you tell them, oh, this dude did this to me and blah, 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 they're going to agree with you and they're going to say, yeah, that guy's a jerk, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And they're not they're not going to be honest with you they're they're not going to tell you you know oh well you should have done this or what you need an unbiased person you need a counselor that is you know neutral that doesn't really know you um in your past so that they can give you sort of an unbiased opinion about what is happening in your life so you know your your friends are there for support it's good to have friends and it's good to talk to your friends but unfortunately they are not going to be able to provide you know a professional level of support they're not going to be able to tell you how to cope they're not going to be able to train you to 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 give you coping skills or give you ideas to cope with your issues they're not professionals and also your friends have their own sets of issues you know your friends have you know all kinds of problems their perception is going to be um, skewed. So, you know, definitely talk to your friends and always have your friends, but they're, they're going to have a very different and often a colored perspective about your situation. And you don't want to ruin those friendships because it does get to the point, And I do know people that have just worn their friends down. I've been worn down by friends in the past that come to me and you know, they, they just spend hours on the phone just whining and complaining about something. They refuse to listen to you about with your issues, but they will go on and on. So you can really damage your friendships um, by using them as your therapist. So I highly, highly recommend you find a professional. You know, go to your friends for certain things, but find a professional to help you, you know, with the big stuff. Especially if you see that your friends are distancing from you or you know they're just not answering their phone anymore or they're they're not calling you you know then you might be wearing them down or they just may feel helpless um, when it comes to helping you so you really have to consider how um, that's going to affect your um, your relationships um, the next one uh, is very very common but a lot of people don't really know really what's behind it and it's denial and denial is probably I think it's probably one of the top reasons that people won't go to therapy because they they either haven't accepted that they have a problem or that or that there is a problem but the second thing that can happen and this is is very common with people that have um, legitimate uh, chemical imbalances in their brain is that they are not able to see their issues. Um, this happens a lot with people that have um, like schizophrenia, attention deficit disorder, um, people with personality disorders. They are just, you know, chemically unable to see their issues. Um, and I know this because I was uh, married to someone that had attention deficit disorder. And there is, there are specific brain chemicals that come into play um, that make you self-aware. And, and people with attention defi deficit disorder lack those brain chemicals. Um, and they are literally unaware of their own behavior. They have no clue when they're coming across um, as being obnoxious or rude or loud, they're just completely unaware. And there are some people, you know, we all have that to a certain extent. We we are all to, to in some way unaware of our behavior because we've been we've been ourselves our entire lives. So we don't know any other way to be. Um, so we all deal with this, but as we get older and we mature, you know, our brains develop and, you know, we're able to see, you know, oh my God, you know, I drank too much at the company party and I acted like an idiot. Um, or, oh my God, I told that joke, but that joke was totally inappropriate. You know, you base it on people's reactions, but there are some people with mental health issues, severe chemical imbalances that really aren't capable of that. And that can lead to denial. 
you tell somebody, well, you know, you're so scatterbrained, you forget everything, blah, blah, blah. And they're just like, no, I don't. No, I don't. I'm fine. No, I don't. And that's because they truly cannot see that. But then there are other people that just refuse to accept the fact that they have a problem. Um, and, and that's because they they either don't want to appear flawed or they, they don't like being wrong or they, they just, they're not at a place yet. Like I mentioned earlier, they're not at a place where they've lost everything yet. So they're not ready to accept that, that they have a problem. So that's good old fashioned denial. And then there's, you know, chemically imbalanced denial where you, you truly cannot see that there's something wrong. And I think that's probably one of the primary reasons people will not get help. Um, so next is, and th this, this, I think also besides denial, I think this is really where it hits home for a lot of people. And I think, you know, all of these other reasons that I've given are sort of a combination of BS excuses or excuses that people pick out of a hat in order to avoid this that I'm about to talk about which is probably at the root of why people won't seek counseling. And that's the negative effects, the negative feelings, you know, bringing things to the surface and feeling bad. And that is, I think, the root of, you know, that actually can be the root of denial. You know, I'm going to deny that I have a problem because if I admit it, I have to go and I have to face it and that's going to hurt. And um, so people will say things like, I don't want to think about it. Counseling is just going to make it worse. Um, I'll betray my family if I go in there and I'm talking about them and I'm saying bad things about them. Um, I'll just get more depressed, more anxious, more emotional, etc., etc. Um, and I believe that this is probably the most legitimate reason because you don't want to feel worse. You don't want to hurt more. You, you know, trust me, I don't like going into counseling and talking about my health issues and talking about how I'm never going to get better. I'm never going to have a life. You start tearing up and you start feeling horrible and you don't want to face those things. Um, so to these people, you know, and, and this, this is the, the reason that I empathize with the most because I do understand this. You don't want to go in there and face the reality of your life, you know, especially if your life is really hard. For example, those of us with chronic illnesses or those people with legitimate um, chemical issues, like people with bipolar disorder, um, people with, you know, borderline personality disorder, you don't want to go in there feeling like there's something wrong with me and now I have to discuss it and face the fact that there's something wrong with me. So, um, I, to those people, this is what I say. When you first go into counseling, you know, if you're with a good counselor, like we discussed earlier, make sure you find, make sure you find someone good. Um, if you're with a good counselor, you're like, a, they're going to treat you like a broken chair. You're going to go in there, you're a rickety broken chair, and they're going to treat you, um, they're, they're going to approach you with caution. They're not just going to sit on you and break you. They're going to check out the chair. They're going to look at it. They're going to see where it's weak, where it's strong. And they're going to do a little bit of repair work. They're going to put a little bit of tape here. They're going to put a little bit of glue there, put a nail here. They're going to strengthen your foundation first before they really get into the deep stuff. So, if, and if a therapist doesn't do that, then you're not with the right therapist. Um, so you look at it as, you know, you're a rickety chair. They have to do a little bit of work first before they really get into, you know, the, the hard stuff. And they got to strengthen you up, fix up that chair a little bit before they actually sit on you. And so that's what I, what I tell people, you know, don't be scared. If you go in there and your therapist is like, oh, well, tell me, you know, tell me who abused you when you were a child, then obviously that therapist doesn't know what they're doing. Um, so, so don't, you know, don't be afraid to go in there. Um, you know, you're, you don't have to bear your soul on the first uh, appointment and, and a good therapist is not going to make you do that on the first appointment. And of course, change is hard and change is, you know, 
painful and you know you you a lot of people are just reluctant to change so you know that 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 is also underneath all of these you know some people see change as a negative effect you know i i don't want to change i i like you know i'm this person i've always been this person and what's going to happen if i become a different person change is very scary and i'm not i'm not going to lie about that change is really hard um so you know that it can be seen, change can be seen as a negative thing. And before I'm done, those are basically the, the umbrella topics. Those are all of the reasons that I, that I researched that I thought were probably the best ones. Um, but there are specific challenges for men and I'm just going to go through this really quick. Um, if you are a guy, uh, guys face their own, you know, I could probably do a whole, uh, vlog on just men and, and therapy and that kind of thing. But the specific things that men, um, face when it comes to therapy um, and, and not wanting to go is basically they're supposed to be problem solvers. We know that men are supposed to be problem solvers. They're supposed to be able to fix their issues without any help uh, <clears throat> because then it'll make them look weak. So weakness is another issue. Um, they don't want to appear weak or in need of help. Um, pride, machismo. Culturally, um, you know, I know Hispanic men have a really difficult time uh, getting in to see therapists, they would rather just deal with it, you know, substance abuse, you know, alcoholism, drug use, that kind of thing, because, you know, we're tough guys. We, we don't talk about our problems. We just, you know, we're, we're whatever, we're strong enough to deal with it, which no one is. If you're a human being, no one is strong enough to deal with these huge issues on their own. Um, and again, change is another one. A lot of times men don't want to change. Sometimes changing is like an admission of I'm wrong, which it isn't, but some people feel that it is. And there's also control. And, um, one thing that I read, and this one was kind of shocking, is that some men don't want to go to counseling because they don't want to give up control of their spouses or girlfriends or their family. Um, and they have some sort of control over them and going to therapy is sort of like relinquishing control and I mean that's already a bad sign in and of itself if you feel like you need to control or manipulate you know your spouse or your children or whatever and in order to to keep them with you then you know that's that's a sign that you probably should go to therapy but there are people that just you know they want to maintain that level of control so they won't go to therapy um, but those are specific, I, I found those um, Googling, you know, men and, and counseling, and those are the top reasons for men. Um, but I think all of these reasons are, you know, really, really good. Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, if, if you are a chronically ill person, I, I, I believe that therapy is just, it, it can be the difference between, you know, living a better life and just living and just living. Um, it's helped me a lot. Even if I've been with counselors that weren't really that great, it has helped me. And I think it's kept me, um, it's kept me going, to be honest. I, I think if I didn't have a counselor, I probably wouldn't be here today. And I, for those of us that are sick, I definitely, definitely recommend it. But anyways, I've gone on too long, um, but thank you so much for being with me for this, for my first, you know, uh, experimental vlog. Um, like I said, this has been split into two parts. The other part is probably going to be, you know,